Hey there everyone, welcome to this week's UB Chef menu. Shortly I'm going to get cooking all the 10 dishes, showing you some little tips on how to plate it up, really, really simple. Remember, if you want to order again, next weekend, Sunday night is our last order for next weekend's menu, and a little discount for you, put in CHEF22, CHEF22, in a little coupon section, gets you 10% off your order, how about that? So, let's get cooking, and I'm going to take you through all of the recipes right now. So starting off with our weekly bake, uh, this week it's a lovely seaweed focaccia, so house focaccia, it comes in this lovely paper which you can just put straight in the oven, uh, all um, biodegradable as well, really, really important. Then we've got our butter just here, this is a whipped yuzu butter, look at that, how delicate, lovely does that look. Just take it off the paper, put it onto your serving dish, and then that's going to soften up now for about 15 minutes. You can see you've got that nice little dehydrated seaweed mixture on the top, a little bit of salt. I'm just going to add a little bit more salt to it as well, just because I do like that little fleck of modern salt at the top. I'm going to get my focaccia in the oven now, 8 to 10 minutes, and then we'll be back to serve this up. So out comes our focaccia. Alright, let's, let's undo it. Now you've got your beautiful loaf there. Oh, it smells delicious, all of that lovely seaweed inside. I'm going to douse the top in more oil. We do put some on when we bake it. I like to put a bit more on. Again, a little bit more salt on the top. Nice serrated knife, that's the top tip here. Just gonna carve off that little edge. That's gonna be for me to try before it goes out. Then four lovely cubes. You see that seaweed all going through the dough. And that is all ready now to serve with your butter, which will have softened up. Hope you enjoy the weekly bake. We've got a mackerel pate coming up now. Uh, mackerel pate is here. This is going to be out 15 minutes before you serve it. Really, really important. Uh, first of all, uh, we've got little crackers in there. So these are tapioca crackers. Um, we've got some like, cuttlefish in. We've got some parsley. Uh, they're just going to go into the oven. Make sure you take the lid off. About one to two minutes or so. Basically, just until they re crispened. That's all we need to do. Right, let's get our mackerel pate. As I say, this has already been warming up. That can just sit there. Then I'm going to slice open my cucumber so all these vacuum pack bags they're all biodegradable that all goes in there so that's my cucumber then i'm going to put my radish in there as well i'm going to put a tiny bit of rapeseed oil just on the top a little bit of seasoning not too much and then just give it a little work around so it's looking all nice right what we do next Start putting your cucumber pieces just around the pate. If you want, you can try to sort of spoon it out of a container. Completely up to you. Uh, I quite like just presenting it all in here. Looks nice and dainty. So you get all those little pieces of radish. Spend a bit of time like so. And that adds a lovely little crunch and of course that heat that we all get from that radish. So there you go, that's all ready. Let's put that just onto our plate. Then we've got a dressing here. So this is our XO dressing. So again, there's a touch of heat in here. It's got shellfish in it as well. I'm just going to very carefully cut off the top. And then I'm just going to undo that. And I'm just going to pour a little bit dressing just on the top remember don't put too much it is quite powerful you can always put a little bit more on after so you serve a little bit of a table then let's grab my crackers out there we go you can hear them start sort of always popping as they crisp up and all I'm going to do is serve some of those just on the side like so put a few just balanced up but I want to be able to still see everything on there there we go beautiful and that is it that is my mackerel pate to start off this week's menu
Up next we've got an aged beef carpaccio, this is grass fed beef here, super super tasty, it's just been seared, sliced so in the, in the centre it's completely raw but lovely lovely and thin. First up, get your little croquettes, this is short rib beef uh, croquettes, get them in the oven, 3-4 minutes. So, in there you go, unless it says on the oven temperatures, all the oven temperatures are the same as well, so really, really simple. Then we've got a little spoon to get some of our carrot dressing, get some carrot dressing, put that over the top of your carrot crudite, give it a nice little mix, a little bit of seasoning, not too much, and that will start to work into the carrot and soften up nicely, give it a lovely shine. Right, we'll just leave that to the side. Then we'll open up our carpaccio, so just with a nice pair of scissors, carefully slice it open, pull that out, and then we've got it just in between some of our little Yubi Chef paper here. You can see the presentation side. So if you swip it, you can see that's the base. You don't want to see that. You want to see that side where we've got the top. So peel it off like so, and then have your plate ready. And then you can just basically get the capaccio, look him down on the top of it. There we go. Place it down and then very carefully peel off that paper. Super, super thin, tasty beef. Touch of rapeseed oil on the top. Use the back of a spoon or pastry brush or your finger just to work that oil in. This is, this is starting to dress it up. Lovely flavors all going on there. Then we'll get a tiny bit of seasoning. At the moment there's no seasoning on that beef of course, so you do need to put that on. There we go, this is all last second as well. Then let's get our pieces of carrot. Play with, it, play with the colours here, you've got purple carrots there, orange, yellow. This is a chance where you can take it from just something looking very average to something of beauty. So we'll keep on building that all the way around. Meanwhile our croquettes are all coming up to temperature, like so. Then I'm going to get a little bit of dressing, find a bit more carrot dressing here. I'm going to add a little bit on the top, like so. Then sesame mayo, just push the end down with your finger and cut off just a fine end of that bag. Remember again, all of our piping bags are all biodegradable, so these can go straight in your compost bin. And then let, hold, the, hold the piping bag with one hand at the end, that's what you want to do, and then use your finger to guide at the other. Pipe, let go, pipe, let go, etc. Keep going. Pipe some really nice piles of that all around your capaccio. One more in there, I'm happy. You can always serve a little bit on the on the side. Tiny little clean up. Let's grab our croquettes. Again, a little bit of seasoning. All I'm going to do is just sit them straight on those little bits of carrot. Now, say now, straight to the table. Kadak, lovely little combination of the cold capacho and those hot croquettes on the top. Hope you enjoy it. Up next is a classic salad lyonnaise. Here we go. Potatoes in there, so sautéed uh, new potatoes with a lovely little onion compote on the top. Keep the lid on there loosely, and we'll get them in about six or so minutes, six or eight minutes, just to heat up. Just check they're piping hot before you serve them. Then in here, you'll see we've got a crispy palade egg. That's going to go in the oven again about five minutes if you want it. Well done in the centre. Extra three or four minutes. Um, we're going to keep the lid, uh, sorry, re remove the lid from that before that goes in the oven. And the only other components for when we come back, we've got some frisé lettuce, which I'm just going to put into my bowl. And then we've got a lovely little whole grain mustard dressing just here, which I'm going to put some of that onto my lettuce just before we serve. So eggs going in shortly and we'll be back to plate it up. Okay, so my egg has just come out of the oven now. There's my crispy egg, tiny bit of seasoning just on the top. Then we've got our Leonese little uh, Potatoes just on here. What you want to do, take some of those potatoes and just place them with, of course, that really nice 
onion compote, which we've caramelised down, as you can see from that beautiful colour on there. Get all your potatoes dressed around, make a almost like a little seat in which you're going to sit your egg on the top. Nice bit of compote. You want to be able to see the potatoes as well as the compote, so just really spend a bit of time making that look lovely. There we go. Right, next up, let's get our dressing. Give it a good shake. That's our little Mio mustard dressing in there, Pomeroy mustard. Then, a good bit of that on the top. Save the rest of it. Again, tiny little bit of seasoning. Use your fingers just to get all of that nicely dressed. The thing about salad leaves, you want to have dressing on each part of it. That's why we dress it in a bowl beforehand. Salad's going on the top. And almost make a little hole just in the centre, like so. Then we'll get our egg, sit that in just like a little bird's nest on the top. And then coming back just before we serve, have a little mix on my dressing. And I'm just gonna nice bit of dressing on the top. That mustard works absolutely brilliant, so don't be afraid about the amount you're using. And there it is, classically, salad leonese, crispy egg and a cut into that white yolk coming out, delicious. On to main courses now, and we've got a ravioli of native lobster. So ravioli is all in here. First of all, take that out. Slice it open. It's on a little board so you can handle it all really well. And then that's going to go into simmering water, in like there. And then it's going to be in there for about eight to nine minutes. You can always put a little knife just in the back of a ravioli. Just put it onto your uh, wrist just to check it's hot. So eight to nine minutes, that's going to be absolutely fine. And then the other garnishes on here, we've got a lovely little fricassee. This is a fricassee of gem lettuce and salsa feet. Take a pan, empty all of that out into there. You've got your fricassee sauce just still set in the bottom. So that's all seasoned up, ready to go. Then that's just gonna go onto the heat, uh, make sure the sauce is melted, and then one to two minutes just to gently cook uh, the lettuce in there. Doesn't need long, that's all there. Bit of lobster beef to finish it off. I'm gonna bring that up, temperature on the stove, and I'm gonna add a little dash of milk just at the end. Whisk, whisk it up, or a little bay mix, and then you'll get lovely little frothy uh, texture to that. And then a little bit of chefy oil just to finish, some tarragon oil, beautiful flavour, lovely vivid green colour to finish it off with. So, we'll be back in about eight or so minutes to finish the ravioli off. Right, almost ready. Here we go, plate all heated up. There's my fricassee sauce with my salsa beef gem lettuce. And I've got a little pan there, a little pan, touch of rapeseed oil, a tiny bit of water in. You can put butter if you prefer. And then let's lift that. Ravioli out carefully, sit that into the dish, and then what I do is just take a spoon and just give it a little baste. And you see then it gets nice and all nice and uh, glazed up. Tiny bit of seasoning just on the top, leave that to one side, and then we've got our little bit of uh, lobster beast, which you see I've put a little bit of milk in. And then I'm just using a hand whisk just to show you, see how it starts to froth up? Just froth it at the edge, like so. And you get lovely and frothy. Use that little hand, hand uh, whisk if you prefer. So, let's start getting some of our fricassee onto our plate. That's just making a base where we're gonna sit our ravioli on the top. Like so, there we go. Then use a fish slice or a spoon, whichever you find easier. Get that ravioli, sit it in pride of place. And we'll go to our lovely little bit of bisque, touch over the top, get some of the sauce which is underneath as well. And keep on spooning that carefully around. Bit more of that froth. And then quickly get your little bit of oil. This is your tarragon oil. Cut the end off. 
and you see how I'm just going to go that round, you see how that green splits the oil. Get quite a bit on there, beautiful flavour of that lobster. And that is it. There we go, straight to the table, beautiful lobster ravioli. Uh, tis the season, so we've got a pheasant balancing on the main course. Comes like that, uh, you've got the pheasant all on one side, little chicken mousse going through there, wrapped in serrano ham. All you need to do, carefully cut it out of its little sous vide bag, like so, and then line your tray with some of that UV Chef paper. I'm just going to sit that on there, like so. Make it with that little bit of time underneath, extra flavour. And then that is going to go in the oven about 12 to 14 minutes. So let's get that in. Beautiful flavours of serrano ham there. Lovely with game, quick rinse on the hands. And then I can explain the other garnishes to you. This is a little gnocchi romaine. So we've got a little polenta just baked in there. Uh, this is flavoured with undunja sausage, so a little bit of spice, touch of cheese, a little bit of stock. Keep the lid on loosely to bake it. And then we've got some winter vegetables, cabbage, little shallots, uh, nice little selection going through there. Both of those are going to be about eight minutes or so in the oven with the lids loosely retained on the top. So I'm just going to give my pheasant a bit of time first. Uh, squash puree, pheasant sauce, that those just on the edge, all ready to heat up. That's it, simple. Back in about 10 minutes, we'll plate it up. Right, just about ready to plate up my little pheasant dish now. So I've got my vegetables out, got my gnocchi remain out, and then there's my pheasant. Make sure you rest it four to five minutes, ideally before you serve. And then you see I'm just going to snip that string off, just one piece, just to hold the serrano and ham in place. Right, what we want to do, we're just going to take some of our vegetables and gnocchi. I'm just going to start placing some of those pieces all the way around where I'm going to put my pheasant. So they're quite delicate. Use a little palette knife or a little fish slice. So that's our undunja little polenta on the top of that. Then we're going to get some of those little onions. Let's get those going around like so. Put some vegetables, a little bit of broccoli. Get that all in the centre ready to put a little bit of pheasant on the top. And I'm going to go some of my squash puree. Use the end of a spoon just to get some nice little bits of that on there, like so. Right, then your pheasant. Slice it however you like. I like to just go into three. So once, see, I'm just put my finger just on the top. Nice sharp knife. There we go. Turn that around, and you see how you got the pheasant there and the mousse. Like so, and let's just put that in the centre, turn it around so you can see that pheasant in all its glory. A little bit of sauce, just around the outside. More sauce on the table if you prefer, of course, and there it is. Lovely little ballantine and pheasant, a uh, little chicken mousse on top, serrano ham, and then just spiced gnocchi remain. Onto our vegetarian main course, we've got a lovely gnocchi dish coming out for you. I'm just going to show you the gnocchi before I bake it inside. Uh, we've got nice wild mushroom gnocchi, uh, sauteed wild mushrooms and field mushrooms in there as well, a little bit of butter, grated truffle and parmesan. Put the lid on just loosely, and that wants to be baked for about 12 to 14 minutes in the oven. And then we've got our mushroom cigarettes here, this is for the brick pastry, but they're wrapped in about eight to 10 minutes or until they're crispy, that's, that's the best sign of it. So we're gonna get this in now, all cooking, spinach puree ready for when we come back, all heated up, and your mushroom dressing, which is gonna be room temperature. I'm gonna get that in, I'm gonna see you in 10 minutes. I've heated that bowl, all ready for my gnocchi. I've got my spinach puree there. Look at that, lovely and silky smooth spinach puree back of a spoon, see how I'll just kind of spin the bowl around, just get a lovely round base and what to put on gnocchi, so you see I'll spend a bit of time doing that, there we go. Then let's go to our gnocchi, all baked now, I'm going to start by getting some of these nice little mushrooms out, King Shimizu there. 
hook some of those out, there we go. And just sit them onto the puree nice and carefully. Then start going with some of your gnocchi. Nice generous portion of those for you. A little bit of grated truffle smell coming off of this. It is delicious. So keep on plating them all the way around, all ones jumped in there. And then finish off, you see I've got some mushrooms in the base. Got a selection of oysters in there, plenty of grated truffle. Make sure you can see some of the spinach puree through. Pickle mushroom dressing up next. Drain it off a little bit just to get some of those nice little flavour bombs on the top. A little bit of a dressing, just around. And all that leaves is to finish off a mushroom cigarette. So just before you go to the table, I'm just gonna put them just on the side, like so. How about that? Seriously flavorous and vegetarian course, wild mushroom gnocchi. So we've got a little take on a trifle now for you, something a bit different though. Um, in here we've got a little banana cake just at the bottom, uh, and then we've got a lovely slightly set miso caramel just on the top of there. Bit of chocolate uh, shavings to go with it. Caramelised banana puree on there, and then we've got a little vanilla creme diplomat, so a very, very not light vanilla cream. First of all, just cut off the little ends of a piping bag, sharp knife or a pair of scissors. So cut those off, and make sure before you do anything, put those in the bin. So, I've got a plate ready. I'm gonna take some of my banana first of all, hold it in one hand, guide it with the other, and then pipe just some nice little piles of that all the way over. Go back, make sure you use it all. See how I'm making some a bit smaller, some a bit larger. Like so, then I'm going to go back and get my vanilla creme diplomat and I'm going to go sort of in between like so and almost done like that lastly, get your little bit of chocolate shavings and just tap them onto the top. Keep those in the fridge or freezer till the last second and just use a spoon and you won't heat them up and you'll get that lovely little, almost like fallen effect. And they've scattered just on the, that's it. A few more just to go on that last little bit. I'll just escape to my plate and there we go. That's our little take on a trifle this week, banoffee style. Last dessert for you is a pina colada uh, parfait. What we've got coconut parfait, pina colada centre, so uh, lovely little um, pineapple centre, rolled in desiccated coconut, really nice. Make sure that is out of the freezer 15 minutes before you're gonna serve it. We've got a little uh, rum pineapple salad just here, crispy coconut pineapple gel. What we're going to start doing um, is just make a little, nice little line of your pineapple cubes. And again, we've um, we sort of like marinated these in a nice little rum syrup. So get those and just build a good little circle. Now we're going to put our parfait in the centre. So get plenty of that on there. Lovely, lovely and fresh to go with that rich parfait. Like so. Then we'll get our gel, cut off just the end of the piping bag, remember? Make sure that goes in the bin or out the way of the plate. And then pipe. Nice little bit of that gel. All the way around. I'm just putting a little, little pipe in piles of it. There we 
we go. So it looks all lovely and beautiful. Let's get our halfway, set that in the centre. And then just nice and carefully, let's get some of that crispy coconut, which we've just sliced very, very finely. Just balance that on the top. Go as high as you dare. Remember, you've got to take it to the table, of course. There we go. That is my take on pina colada. Lovely little parfait, fresh pineapple salad with that rum. Hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for joining me on this week's cook along. How about that? All the dishes done, starts, main courses, desserts, we've got our weekly bread. Remember extras as well, the video will be back on a different section if you bought an extra from us this week. Last orders, Sunday night for next week's menu. I uh, hope to see you soon and hope you had a great meal.